<laughs> well, welcome to the show, and uh, I apologise. Has it felt a little like uh, harassment, abuse? Or yeah. Yeah, yeah. So we'll we'll calm it down now. We'll just take, relax. I've got to say, it's great having the show because I am a fan. Uh, and I was a fan long before you did Bond, even. Nice. I always enjoyed you. I saw uh, Our Friends in the North, which I right. thought was tremendous, and uh, Enduring Love and various other movies. So I was delighted when it was announced that you would be taking on the role. Of course, uh, a big decision, and one which I believe initially, when you offered Bond, you, you were reluctant to accept. Uh, yeah, I, well, yes, I was. I kind of walked away from it at first because it was... Uh, it was... I couldn't wrap my head around it. Um, and I didn't see myself doing it. It was as simple as that. So. But why did you not see yourself doing it? Why, as an actor? As just a... as an actor, I'd never sort of imagined it. I'd never envisaged myself playing it. So I, I, I was kind of thought they were... I genuinely thought they were having a bit of a giggle, weren't they? Because you didn't think you were handsome enough? I, don't, I just... I really didn't know, you know, I didn't sort of... wasn't on my radar at all. Is it because the kind of Bond movies they'd be making weren't the sort that you would be happy making? Because it's a very different sort of Bond movie. I knew that once I'd made the decision to make it that we had to do something different and I wasn't going to get involved unless we did something like that, like Casino Royale. Yeah. And now we've got a sort of chance to sort of push that on a bit. How, how much of a factor in the decision was knowing how much it would change your life and change the way people perceived you both as a, a, an actor and when they meet you on a day-to-day -day basis? Yeah. Yes, it was a factor. It was a huge factor. My, my answer's a bit more monosyllabic than Russell's, aren't they? Though? You might have to do yeah. a bit more talking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but... <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's not like talking to a crazy man, so I'm rather enjoying it. Um, is it true that for about three years you had a mouse living in your hair? Yes. <laughs> uh, but, you know, uh, I, it, must have, it must be just such a sort of dramatic change in, in just about everything. Because I know, mm. from my own experience of, of meeting various famous people, when you're out with them sometimes, the reaction that people get who are known all over the world is alarming. And, and it must have just dramatically changed your life. I, can, I imagine you can't go to the places you used to go always and you no, can't... No, you can't. I mean, I can't go to the pub anymore, really, for very long. I can sort of get in there and get a couple of pints and then they run out. And then they recognise when people will phone each other and stuff. And... It can happen. I can, people tend to use their mobile phones on me a lot, sort of, they're kind of very careful... Well, they kind of very carefully sort of bring it round and take a quick picture. Yeah, yeah. And it's kind of disconcerting and I kind of do that because it's like, it's sort of interrupting me. And no but... one wants a picture of you like that, no, do they, well, really? there's probably plenty of them out there, actually. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, is it fun doing action movies? Because as a boy, I loved watching them. Mm. As a young man, I still enjoy watching them and, and li <laughs> like the idea of maybe one day doing some myself. Uh, is, it, is it good fun? <laughs> I lost it. What were you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> it's his age, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> so, uh, the, the those action sequences, yeah. are they fun or are they yeah, tedious? No, well, they're, they're, they're just very carefully planned. I mean, literally, uh, today I started rehearsals for the next Bond film that we start shooting in January. So we have a month of rehearsals now uh, to try and get the action sequence as carefully choreographed as possible. So when we get there, A, we don't get hurt, but B, we make it look So right. they start so, with that. They know yeah. what the big action set pieces are going to be, uh, do they? Uh, roughly. Yeah. yeah, we roughly mark them out. Okay. Uh, how exciting it was, though, to see you in that movie, because a lot of the stunts you did yourself, and you really get that feeling. I mean, there's the mm. beginning of Casino Royale, and I'm pretty sure you... I am imagine you've all seen it. When you're running up that crane, yeah. wow, that was uh, not only exciting and dramatic, but also that was clearly you doing that. Mm. Now, I'm assuming they had you on a harness or something, yeah. but even so, that was, that was... You were pretty high up there. It, it, it was. I had to get over that. But, um, I mean, I didn't do the really high stuff, but what we had is we had a crane rigged on top of a building, which was on top of another uh, platform on top of an, another building, which was... I'm not making it very clear, am I? But it was high. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and, and there was kind of, and you know, it was. I kind of had to. I just had to sort of breathe. So you had to suck it up, and you had to go up there and yeah. do it. But but you wanted to do it because I really I, did. Yeah. Yeah. I imagine if you didn't want to do it, you could say, well, can we do this with a stunt person mm. or a double, and you could get away with that. You could. But I just, I, I, I thought if I could, if they were confident enough to let me do them, I'd, I'd, I should do them because it's my face, and I think people can tell. Yeah, because yeah. you've got a very distinctive-looking face. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> if you don't mind me saying so, what? you're a very handsome man. Why are you whispering to me? Because this is... <laughs> in case you don't want anyone else to hear this. To do this. <laughs> I think you're very handsome. Stop it. <laughs> and I hope you find me a little bit handsome. It's been a really well. tough evening. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. But you, you kind of look... You've got a craggy, a craggy old face, Thank Daniel, you. haven't you? Yeah. Uh, no, in a good way. You're just not... trying to take it back. No, no. But I like it. It's no. a good craggy face. It's kind of like a handsome Sid James. Uh. <laughs> You've, you, you've encountered this before, I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> My name is Bond. <laughs> <laughs> All right. 
Uh, what, if anything, can you tell us <laughs> yeah. about the forthcoming Bond movie, which is uh, called Bond 22 at the at moment? The moment. The, we haven't the, got a title just at the moment. Do we, you no, don't I have can't. any title? You don't have any I idea can't, of the title? I can't tell you if we had any, anyway, but... Will, mean, it, will, it, will it harken back to any of the other titles? Uh, no, no, it won't. I, I think you know more than you're letting on, Mr Maybe. Bond. <laughs> Maybe. I expect you to talk, Mr Bond. <laughs> I can't tell you. I really can't. There is a hole in that couch, Mr. Bond. <laughs> <laughs> and underneath it lies Russell Brand. <laughs> <laughs> and he has a mouse, and he's not afraid to use it. So. <laughs> well, uh, you know, I, I loved the movie, and it was, a, it was a treat to see them get it right, because they really, you know, I, I've liked most of the Bond movies, but it was a treat. And I, I know how much work goes into it, because I was lucky enough to go to the uh, location a few times. Twice. Uh, yeah, once here, here in the UK and once yeah. in the Bahamas. Yeah. It was a very tough decision mm. to make to go out there for that. And I saw the Bond we lady. Could find you, could we, for that interview? Well, I was having, I was helping the lady you get on the turn. horse. The Bond lady kept falling off the horse, and I was I was I thought helping her. Why she had to get the police involved? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> a finger can slip in easily when you get what? What? The horse didn't mind. <laughs> now. Daniel, uh, let's talk about the new movie, The Golden Compass. Mm. Uh, I, I imagine they're going to make a, a trilogy here, because, of course, it's based on a series of books. That's right. A big special effects blockbuster. Mm. Um, I would have thought quite a daunting thing to step into, because, once again, it's, it's another big project. It was just a piece of luck, really. I'm a, I'm a big fan of the books, and um, yeah. I, I literally finished Bond and made a phone call and said, what's happening, what's going on with them? So you, you read the books and thought, I'd like to be involved yeah, in I knew films. they were making the movie, and I just yeah. thought, that I'd, you know, I'd been a big fan well, of them, so... He's playing Lord Azriel in the, the books. If you know the books, of course, you know the character there. Um, when I finished the last book, I'm not ashamed to tell you this, mm. I cried at the end of the last book. They're, they're, they're fantastic, the books. I mean, there's no... There's, you know, Philip Pullman's a fantastic writer. Did you and cry? They're very emotional. Did you cry at the end of the I last might, book? Yeah. We should buy, We should share mum. I cried we and I was sitting on a... We share a room. No. <laughs> <laughs> buy me a drink first, Daniel. <laughs> Christ almighty. <laughs> Bond walks in, he thinks I'm going to drop me kex immediately. <laughs> well, no. But what a, what, a, what a great series of mm. books. And, and the special effects are just dynamite in this. Uh, and you yeah. couldn't have better other actors involved there. I mean, mm. Nicole Kidman is just radiant mm. on screen. Mm. And I love the fact that the, the bears, and if you're familiar with the books, you know there's this, a, a huge central character who is a, a talking, powerful bear, mm. who is voiced by... Ian McKellen. Sir Ian McKellen. Mm. Uh, couldn't be better. And that's a terrific fight sequence in the mm. middle there. Mm. Um, how, how much do you have to put into this, though? Because presumably uh, there are so many characters, so many storylines. Mm. It's not anywhere near as big a commitment as the Bond movies? Or, or is no, it, it wasn't. It was... I mean, it's still, I kind of, it took up quite a bit of the year because we had to go back and do some reshoots on it and they spent some more money and it was just, you know, it's a big movie. But um, it's, it's an interesting thing. I've never really acted um, on green screen before and sort of spoken to empty spaces. Well, that's not strictly speaking true, but uh, I am... I, 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 what are you implying? I, I, yeah. I'm holding up my end of the conversation. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, let's have a look at a clip, but before we do, let, can we explain the principle, for those who might not be familiar with the, with the books, of uh, the demons, the mm. characters that were called demons? What, what do they represent? It's, they're your soul. They're, 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 they're the sort of your, either your alter ego, they're what you carry inside you. The idea in the, that there are many parallel universes... This is sounding like Russell's conversation. Though, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it's it's um, that you... But in this world, you carry it on the outside of your body, and it's an animal. And that animal, uh, when you're a child, can change shape, but when you kind of go through puberty and you become an adult, it sets. It's such a beautiful concept, isn't it? Yeah. It's such a wonderful idea. Mm. Uh, and your character, his demon is... Uh, I've got a snow leopard. You've got a snow leopard, yeah. and Nicole Kidman has a golden monkey mm. in the film. And what is her demon? What do you mean, what is it, a golden monkey? Oh, I was talking about her... <laughs> 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 All right, that was a shit joke, I admit it. <laughs> Daniel, how great to spend some time with you. I'm so thrilled you came on. Uh, before um, you go, and as I was saying earlier about uh, the business of your schedule, but what I admire about your career at the moment is that you, you're doing these big films, obviously you enjoy them, they're, they're great crown pieces, but also the movies you do which are, I, I would have thought, more personal to you. They're, they're smaller budget movies and they're more kind of complex films. Uh, there's this new one coming out. Is it called Flashback? Is that right? Yeah, it's called Flashbacks of a Fool, which is uh, a close friend of mine and I have made this year. He directed it. He wrote it, wrote it about five years ago and we've just been kind of struggling to get it made. But funnily enough, because of Bond, 
I, we, we, we got the money. I guess in a way you can use the, the sort of power, the clout that comes with being bond to, to get things off the ground. It keeps me interested and it keeps me doing what I find interesting and if I just stick to one thing then you can, I, I mean anyone, anybody yeah. would get You bored. wouldn't want to just do the big, the green screen movies or the bond movies, you want to do a bit I of like everything. I like doing them occasionally, yeah. yeah. I, I would love, if you do need a villain in the Bond film, seriously, I'm quite happy. Me and David Williams, I think, will make a great pair. <laughs> it's more waste than one. <laughs> <laughs> you, 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 you. you what? <laughs> Did you swear at me, Craggy? No, I'm know. hoping Craggy will catch on as a popular nickname <laughs> yeah. for you. <laughs> uh, Daniel, great to have you on the show. Thank you so much for coming on. I appreciate it. Ladies and gentlemen, the one and only Mr. Daniel Craig. <laughs> yeah, thank you.